Hello, I'm Keith Eisner. Welcome to another edition of Thurston County Connection, produced with Thurston County Community Television. Today is a special day down here at the Port of Olympia where we are welcoming hundreds of paddlers in the Squaxin Canoe 2012. Well, my name is Keith, and I'm with the local television, and your name, sir? Is? My name is John Martin Sr., and my Tlingit name is Kehinuk. Mm -hmm. My Tlingit name is Kaltsin. English name is Carolyn Martin. Can you tell us why you're here today? You know, we, we try to be good ambassadors for the children, our grandchildren. There are too many wrongs and those wrongs so make a right. We joined the One People Canoe Society and now with Chief Nelson is to cut down on drugs, alcohol, abuse, and suicide. So hopefully the teachings of our grandfather's people would actually show them the paths, the right paths to take. So we're just trying to be role models and we don't talk strict or angry languages. But we come to Washington to join our tribal brothers, the, all the indigenous nations in Puget Sound. Hopefully that we also will learn because their vision is the same as ours. And so today my words was, those Lingas and Haidas and Simsian that reside in the Washington area, hopefully they will hear our voices and to say hello to us. And all we do is we, we want to replicate what our ancestors are doing because we love our ancestors and their children here in Washington. The, the, our ancestors' children are also residing in Washington. It's been a great journey. I was raised by my grandfather. He was, he was my role model. He was my mentor. He was my teacher. I did uh, everything with him. I was raised as an only child. And today's, today's Thingit people don't have what I was taught as a child. And together with my hubby, I, I would like to see us get a little deeper into teaching the children and our grandchildren the uh, teachings that we learned as children. And then also, I, uh, I cry when I see an abused child. I cry when I hear on the news that a child has been beaten. We weren't raised that way. And uh, we have a program that uh, flew this, this year called One is Too Many, and it's suicide prevention. So all of that, uh, I imagine, rolls into behavioral health. And that's, that's what I am all about. I've heard a welcome cry. And could you repeat that welcome cry and tell us, give us a translation? It's all about love, respect, and, uh, and, and cultural. What it means, Don IT. Don IT is the way of our ancestors. For 10,000 years, these words have been recited. So when we were coming to shore, I only carried their message. 
They say, Don IT, let's do and say and act the way our grandfathers used to act. I'm a fluent speaker. I speak Tlingit fluently. And it's, it's really a blessing that my grandfathers taught me well. They told me, says, grandson, you're ready. Today I wanted the people of Washington to hear the respect that we bring to the shores. In every stop we said, Don IT, let's hear the voices the way our voices when our grandfather spoke. We wanted them to hear it. What I wanted to hear is, we need to share stories. We need to share stories of the other indigenous nations. Already I've actually heard many stories that are similar to the Thinket people and Haida and Simpson people. I guess that's the reason why our people love it here in Puget Sound. There's, we always like to say, they're same like us. And uh, it's wonderful. And we didn't need to make a whole lot of adjustment. And the canoe people, the children that, and the youngsters that were with us, their spirit has grown immensely. It's so obvious. They also have those happy faces. When our canoe society is returning back to Alaska, the ones, the new friends that we met and the tribal members, I taught them the words. We never say goodbye. We say, Tsuye Kwasatin, we'll see you again. And see you again, maybe not in this, maybe in this life and maybe in the next life. That's what that means. The spirit that never dies, same like the spirit of the trees. The trees that provide for us in the canoes, totem poles, clan houses and such, and the artists that use, utilize cedar, yellow cedar, red cedar. And they too, I learned from the indigenous people in Puget Sound, they have similar traditions. These folks have really know how to build canoes and they have the trees to go with it and the artists. So uh, we also want to thank you that, uh, that you heard our voices. The, when I looked at the land and I looked up in the audience, it's amazing. All those people not knowing what they're going to expect or hear. When I heard them clapping, it was all worthwhile to share words and to look at their smiley faces. It is tremendous. It's tremendous for our spirits. I am so glad that you chose to spend a few minutes with us. And once again, the, the clinket word for our, our, our phrase for see you again. That means we'll see you again. Why are you doing this, Daryl? Uh, I was actually volunteered by my mother. <laughs> and why did she volunteer you? Uh, just spiritual help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, cultural stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, it looks easy paddling. How hard is it to be paddling almost all day? It's horrible, actually. <laughs> uh, there's been lots of times where I actually wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing this? Two weeks today. Two weeks today. Two weeks today. Yeah. yeah. And today's the final. Are you going to go to the potlatch? Yes. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should let you go one more time. But if, if this opportunity comes up next year, will you consider doing it? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's yeah. a good journey. Good. Good. Well, what was good about it? Friends and family, mm -hmm. friends and it was getting to know everybody. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot more than teamwork to to paddle with people for two weeks and not want to kill them. <laughs> Thank you. And you came all the way from BC. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, Beecher Bay in Victoria, mm -hmm. BC. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Daryl. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Julie Morris. What tribe are you? Uh, Moe Titmachlet out of Gold River, BC, Canada, west side of Vancouver Island. Is this your first journey? 
No, it's my 11th. 11th? Yes. And uh, what is the importance uh, for you of the, the journey? What do you learn? What do you bring with you? Well, okay, I just guess. little things like healing. Something to heal from, something that might be bothering me, even from years ago. That it's not alcohol or drugs for me, it's just uh, more or less personal issues. Well, you know, meaning personal, I mean things that may hurt me, you know, uh, inside. My name is Yaasha. Yeah, and can you spell it, please? Y A Gladostop A Bard Lambda A T. And what tribe are you with? Well, I'm with Maka, but I paddled in with Moachit today. Mm -hmm. And what was today's paddling like? Today, well, today was a little bit short. It was only mm -hmm. a couple hours. And it was hot, sitting out there waiting for everybody on shore. Mm -hmm. What's the average day paddling? Um, pretty average, probably six to eight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the ocean. Uh -huh. And this is your first, second, third? How many times have you done, have you participated in the paddles? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. Why? Um, I had some real tragic deaths in my, mm, in 1996. I lost my cousin, my husband, and my brother within eight months, and it kind of, uh, kind of put me into depression. But then I went on the paddle in 1997, and uh, something just touched me. And it just changed my life forever. Cause now I do it every year. I have my own canoe. So it's just it's my life now. You have your own canoe that you built? or? Oh, uh, no. Someone made it for me. Mm -hmm. And how many people are on your canoe? Eleven. Mm -hmm. And are you the skipper? I skip her sometimes, but I sit mostly stroke. Mm -hmm. so. It looks real easy from the shore. Tell me about <laughs> it. Tell me what it takes to get, a, to get a canoe. I almost said boat, to get a canoe. Well, I think it's just pacing yourself, your endurance, and making sure you're, you, know, you get enough water, you get enough food, you get enough rest. It's kind of hard you know, when you're getting up and going every day. I mean, some days we're up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and... You know, uh, uh, this journey's been a little bit shorter, but most of the time they're longer. You know, you're getting up at four and paddling six, eight hours. These are pretty short little jaunts, so. And I'm sure every year you learn something new. What did you learn this year? What did I learn this year? Hmm. I guess I learned to share a lot more. I mean, we had a lot of macaw pullers that ended up going on with uh, a lot of other canoes so mm -hmm. I'd have to say sharing this year was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the rest of the world? Yeah they're canoes not boats. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, this experience is pretty good. This see lots of nature out there. New territory, listen different music. It's pretty interesting. It's kind of life-changing, actually. I learned more about myself, actually, inside. Yeah, like it's pretty cool. You don't realize how tough you can be until you do this journey. It's pretty exhausting. How many days? I do. Where? Um. Can I be Ours is about 14 days. 14 days all together paddling. We started in Couch in BC. Our tribe's from Bella Bella. Yeah, every place we stopped in, they they would feed us there, and I liked it. That was good good hospitality from everybody. They were all friendly people, all up and down this coast here. Oh no, we slept in our tents every time we stopped. We'd have our have our own group have our own group set up in one area. But our group's called N Nala Winds. How many people were in your group? Um, all together, I think there was about 14, maybe about 18 paddlers all together. But then we only had seven in each canoe. We had two canoes, actually. Our canoes are just down there.
it's, we didn't even know each other when we started off, and now it's like we know each other, we've known each other all our lives. Just this kind of trip brings a family together. Yeah. Canoe family. My name is Brendan Humchick. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're on different canoes. We're, uh, we got two canoes, and me and him are in front of the skipper. It's, they're called clam diggers. So, yeah. Uh, it's two, it's eagles, two eagles. I'm a, my, it's my crest eagle. Uh, uh, this is my second year. So, yeah. Uh, this is my third, my third journey in two years. As we go north too, there's going to be three of us from my canoe family to go north. We do protocol on the uh, 30th or 29th and then we, we go home a day later and we're going to be going home for 14 hours and we're going to go back out in the canoe to go north for another tribal journeys. So it's going to be my fourth tribal journeys in two years. I'm 24. Yeah. It is very important for our tribe to have a connection to the water. In our water, marine waters, there is so much native science that is so important to our people. Our people have traditions that are so uh, connected to the natural resources of the land, but also to the water. We understand the ecosystems, the changes of the season. In our teachings, the Gudzari, there are teachings about the changes of the season, which even include understanding the changes of the tide. It's very important for tribal nations in Washington State and elsewhere. It is very important for the tribes in Washington State and in the Northwest to participate in the canoe journeys. What happens is we gather together like families, we share our values, our philosophies, our teachings, with our younger generation. What this does is it empowers our younger generation, helps them to find the good roads to follow on, how to make healthy choices and decisions that will make their life time a good life. What does this symbolize to you and your tribe? The journey symbolizes that we're out there for our ancestors to do what they did in the past, travel and gather and dance and have a lot of fun and learn new stuff and new songs and new dances from the different tribes and just have fun and get together and know that it's native shine time. So is this your first time? Yeah, this is actually my first year polling. Great, and you think you do that again? Yeah. How many days were you in uh, the canoe? Did you, you um, paddle? We left Cowichan on um, July the 15th, and we came through the San Juan Islands to Samish, and then joined other canoes and came our, our way down here to Squaxin. So, is it your first time doing this? No, this is my 16th year. So every year you get you get a bit. Yeah, right? yeah. This was Bella Bella in 1993 and then it goes all the way up to present day and this is Squaxin mm. right here. So you see a lot of our pull, our pullers wearing this copper ring. The copper ring um, symbolizes the 10 rules of the canoe as well as the sacred circle teachings and um, Philip Red Eagle makes these for pullers and he did the ceremony with our group back in Swinomish. So some of our pullers who are on their first year got their copper ring and their first bead is red, but my first bead goes back to 1993. So what did you learn on this uh, particular uh, journey? This, uh, I learned about the Puget Sound. I've never been this far south. The furthest south I've been is um, Puyallup, when they hosted in 1998. And so coming down to Squaxin is further than Puyallup, so I learned some new water, some water, so that was pretty cool. Did you see any anything special uh, nature-wise? Uh, um, we seen a wolf, 
we've seen um, lots of seal, we've seen cranes, we've seen uh, geese, um, fish, um, otters. otters. Uh, what else did we see? Cranes. Cranes, eagles. Yeah, we've seen a lot of wildlife. Yeah. Other other canoe families? No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So we all had a good time. Thank you. What's your name? Um, my ancestral name is Menzeno Kaiwelia. I come from Bella Bella and Squamish. And my English name is Donda. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, it's just that my grandma, she always wanted, it was always her dream to um, uh, be on the canoe journey, but she never got to because she died. So you're doing that for your grandma? That's good. Did you like it? How was that for you? Pretty good. Do you think you'd do that again? Yeah. Uh, I'm the skipper for the Zunokwasis. That's Chief Frank Nelson's canoe. Uh, he's from the Kingdom Inlet, uh, but we're from Lummi. So the pullers are from Lummi. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing, how long you've been on the, on the bay paddling? Uh, this will be my seventh journey. Seventh journey? So you started two, three weeks ago? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we've been on the water since the 17th. Mm -hmm. And what, today started out at about 8 o'clock or so? Uh, 4.30. 4.30 yeah. this morning. What did you do at 4.30 this uh, morning? Well, we got our camp ready to get shuttled to the Squaxin Island, and then we pulled here. It's a lot of work, I can see that. And why do you do it? Uh, to, to bring back our ancestors, to bring back the... The, the, the way they travel, you know, the highways that they have traveled, to bring back that, that feeling of, of oneness from, from tribe to tribe to stand united together. Mm -hmm. And for you personally, what was a highlight of this trip? Uh, the highlight of this trip? Well, that I mentioned I'm skipper of Chief Frank Nelson's mm -hmm. canoe. Uh, just being here and seeing, seeing all the people gathered together as one, you know, um, no matter which race, color, creed you come from, everyone showed up as one and, you know, hope, hope to make the, the planet a better place for everyone. And what does, what's your role as a skipper? <laughs> uh, well, I have uh, 16 pullers, uh, and it's my job to get them from point A to point B uh, safely. So I got to make sure that everyone, the, the weight of the, the canoe is level, make sure that everyone stays hydrated, make sure everyone's well rested, uh, make sure everyone has, is in a good mood, you know. So, that, so just pretty much getting everyone here safely. Well, so James, the, the paddling is over, and now what happens? Uh, so now, as, as you've seen, they, they asked, all the canoes have asked to come to shore, to come to the home territory of the Squaxin people. So next, they'll be sharing songs and dances uh, from the northernest region or the furthest away to the closest region. So uh, they do songs and dances, and the protocol will be uh, at Squaxin Island. Great. Thank you. Did you, uh, how many days did you pass? Uh, Same since as... Since uh, 15th. Yeah. From Cowichan. Cowichan Bay. Van Vancouver Island, Canada. So, so what tribe are you guys? Ah, uh, Bella Bella, Heltic Nation. He's Bella Bella. I'm Moochit Machwit, which is New Charnels, from Vancouver. Did you know each other before? No, never no, met each other. No, not at all, but... I found out he's my uncle, though. He's my nephew. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. fun meeting a lot of people here. And we're all family. So how is this experience uh, for you? Do you meet a lot of other tribes and you yeah. talk to them? You yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you learn from a lot of elders from other tribes. This was his first canoe journey. Yeah. Mine, uh, third. Yeah. So what, what are you going to bring with you from this journey? Uh, a lot of teachings. A lot of teachings. Learn Lessons. new songs and dances. So the songs and dances that you learn, are they for some specific uh, ritual or? Uh, no, just uh, all around. All around. Like gathering? Yeah. yeah. Pot latches, all that. Ceremonies. And just celebrations too. 
So what's your name? Alex Campbell. Ashton Louis Jack. Thank you guys. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tiny Burrell. And uh, what tribe are you from? I'm Klingit. I'm uh, from the Duck Dane Tarn clan from the Whale House in Huna, Alaska. So you've been paddling from Alaska? No. No, they didn't start. In, uh, they started early in Alaska for celebration, which happened in Juneau, and then they loaded the canoes aboard the ferry and brought them south to start in Bellingham. I'm a veteran and uh, Chief Frank Nelson brought a veteran's canoe down from BC and I was deeply honored to uh, have been asked to sit in that canoe to represent the veterans. They have a, uh, a dance group called the Kutia Dancers and we perform all over the state of Washington, Oregon, you know, uh, Northern California, Montana. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, presentations to perpetuate the culture of the Tlingit people. The painting on my face represents Raven walking across my face. There are several designs of our clan. This is just one of them. Starting tomorrow, we'll really elaborately paint our faces. They represent the different mammals and animals of our homes in Alaska. We had seven or eight canoes coming from Quinault now. Mm -hmm. we, we started out with one. And we're, we're hosting next year, you know, 13. And so the canoes will be coming to the ocean. We're on the ocean front, down by Aberdeen, Hopecombe, Grace Harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, this kind of action just keeps me alive. <laughs> it's, it's, see those canoes coming in from every direction. Mm -hmm. I made friends from here to Alaska on these journeys. Mm -hmm. and I hope it never stops. Let's keep going. Thank you. Yeah. And, you and your name again is? Hanashu. That's my Indian name. And you, you, you called me Philip Martin. Okay. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Life is more, life what did you learn? There's more to life than video games. That this journey is just not for the uh, ride. Thanks for watching this edition of Thurston County Connection. You can find out much more about the Squaxin Island events and next year's paddling events by checking out this website. Please tune in next month for another edition of Thurston County Connection. Thank <laughs> you.